Will Sam Laporta play? Is Austin Eckler 100%? How risky is Mike Evans? Is the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown, back? Well, welcome back to the Injury Prone Podcast. Today, we'll review all of these topics and give you the most up-to-date injury news, IR transfers, and stick around for three wide receivers that you should be buying low on. So uh, I'm Jorge Martin. You can see all of my work right now really on Yahoo. I also have the Familia FFP podcast, but right now we are talking the Injury Prone podcast. So make sure you're getting out to uh, the Patreon, injuryprone.com. Uh, I'm sorry, patreon.com slash injuryprone. So right here, I got me cuate to my side. Uh, he's your cuate. He's everybody's cuate. Uh, compadre Edwin Porras, como estamos? El doctor. El doctor, I'm good, man. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you. I want to talk some some Hispanic vitros, some Mexican vitros at the end with you uh, for Cultura class. But I, I'm, I'm sad, man. The Twins lost to the dirty, no good, pig, what is it? Pig stealing, you know, from the holes, the, the Astros. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I'll play nice. I'll play nice to Sandbox. I won't say anything bad about the Astros. They're a good ball club. Uh, they sort of ended hot. So we're talk, we're here to talk football, though. We'll talk football. We'll, we'll leave the baseball um, to the playoffs. Baseball's dead to me at this point. The playoffs are dead to me. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter, though. If you, if you ask me, I'm not bitter. Yeah, and I'm not still bitter about the thousand dollars I spent on World Series tickets back in 2017. <laughs> you know, I'm still I'm not yeah. bitter about that. Not bitter <laughs> about going to Game Seven with all you know, thinking I'm going to watch the Dodgers sing "We Are the Champions" and you right. know, and no, not bitter about that. So vamonos, vamonos. Let's <laughs> let's let let's uh, let's jump into the show right now. Um, the injury prone. So we're going to get some quick some quick hits right now. Miles Sanders, shoulder. It looks like look, he's out. What are we what are we talking? They got it. Yeah. So the amount of time that running backs typically miss for shoulder injuries is one to three weeks. We know he's going to get the bye week after this. So he in theory, he should be back uh after the Panthers bye week. And actually, we just got uh I just saw an injury report come through on uh, that uh it looks like Roshan Johnson just got uh downgraded to out. Just got that. Just got that alert on my phone. So, that so I'm up. sorry. Say that again. Audio looks like Roshan. Oh, Ro- Roshan Johnson. It looks like he got uh, he got downgraded to out. Right. Yeah, just I now. did see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just now. Yeah. So Roshan Johnson's out. Um, yeah, Roshan Johnson. And this was going to be the other one. Khalil Herbert's out. Travis Homer's out. It's going to be the Deontay Foreman show. I actually have my my sleeper app open right now, looking for uh, what places I don't have Deontay Foreman, so I could add him because you're going to want to add Deontay Foreman. He should have been rostered already. You knew that this could have could have been coming, but if you, for whatever chance, are listening to this now and you <laughs> still and you go out there and you you don't see and you see Deontay Foreman on your rosters, uh, not on a roster, you got to get him. No. Okay. Well, Deshaun Watson, another one, uh, downgraded to out, uh, that shoulder, that looks like it's, uh, going to linger, isn't it? Yeah. So this is kind of a situation that's been interesting to monitor because, uh, allegedly he was medically cleared two weeks ago. When I hear that, I think to myself, well, medically cleared, but he, he didn't play. I don't know. The situation's kind of, kind of odd to me in theory, if it really is a rotator cuff contusion, it could be a situation where, he just doesn't feel right because this could take up to five, you know, four or five weeks for him to get right. Uh, maybe he's just taking care of himself. Uh, maybe it's something deeper, but we assume that he's medically cleared. But yeah, he's not going to go. PJ Walker is a massive downgrade, obviously, but um, you probably still have to start Amari Cooper. You probably still have to start Jerome Ford. And in deeper leagues, you can consider the other guys. I don't know what you think. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's really just Ford and Cooper. And and considering the considering the matchup, it's it's really rough. If you, I mean, if you've got very few people have two good running backs right now, uh, and it, it's hard it, it's hard to sit forward, but uh, lower your expectations. Maybe you know with PJ Walker, we've seen him be good. We've seen him throw the deep ball. Maybe maybe he gets uh, Amari Cooper loose, but really not anybody else. Not even David and Joku because the the tight ends we just don't know. Um, uh, well. Daniel Jones that so how worried are you the fact that the that he has the neck injury that knocked him out for several weeks um, of a few seasons ago yeah this is something to consider um 
he was out. He ended the season on IR in 2021 because of this neck issue. Uh, he it was a weird situation. He he claimed that he had a non related neck surgery. Who knows what that really means? Um, if that's actually true, but this is not. I would I don't take this lightly. Neck injuries are serious. They're chronic, and he's out this week. I am not 100% confident he'll be back next week either. I mean, we don't really know what's going on with Daniel Jones. Like, if you had him, you are already making contingency plans. You were already streaming. Just, uh, yeah, there's not much you can do. You're not, you're not going to be able to to give Daniel Jones away at this point. So you just have to hold on and and hopefully that he he can make have some sort of uh, resurgence and and get healthy again. And you put on their Tyrod Taylor revenge game. Does it count when you played for like 12 teams? <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely. It counts. Revenge against absolutely. half the league. <laughs> absolutely. Revenge against half the league, man. Uh, yeah, this is a Tyrod Taylor revenge game. I'm excited. Oh, I do this meal. Uh, you know, we got Traylon Burks. It looks like he's, uh, I, I believe he's already, tra- uh, already out. Um, I, you mentioned, you, you mentioned on there, you know, that, you got to have Tajay Spears. And I totally agree with you on that one. Totally yeah, you have agree. to have Ta- Tajay Spears. Uh, he, his snaps and his, his, his snap share and his rushing share now has gone up. I don't know if you have the specific numbers in front of you, but he is becoming more involved. Uh, Derek Henry is every bit of whatever, 29, 30 years old. Uh, I understand the offense is bad, but you know, and he still has some time to show out, but he's had one big performance and it was against a terrible rush uh, defense. And I just don't know. I, I think that we're starting to see the decline in Derrick Henry. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's still getting the, tar- he's still getting the touches. I just had a, I was just reviewing an article that where he's getting 19 touches a game. His snaps are way down. So they, it seems like when he's in there, they use him, but yes, Tajay Spears, his snaps were up initially, but now he's getting more and more targets. He's getting more and more. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling that up right now. He's getting more targets. He's getting more. Uh, I mean, just really, um, you know, just more usage in, in the game. So he's not just out there as a decoy or anything like that. So uh, I'm, I'm looking, let's see, I'm looking at him right now real quick. Uh, where is that bell cow report that I love to use? Um, but yeah, he, I mean, last week he, you know, he scored the touchdown last week, beautiful 19 yard end around that, that, uh, that, that, that he came home, but um you know, I believe it was like I think he had like eleven or twelve touches total. He's getting all the usage in the in the passing game because uh, originally they would they would you know definitely drop some uh, passes over to Henry. So uh, yes, firing up Tajay Spears and really you know on that on, on that team it's like you're starting Henry, you're starting D Hop, and you're starting Tajay Spears, you're, and really nobody else on that team. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, lastly, Jameer Gibbs, it doesn't look like he's going to play this, uh, if his hamstring is going to linger, it's going to, does it look like it's going to be a problem, but considering the fact that he's not on IR. Yeah. So we don't really know how long, uh, Jameer Gibbs is going to be out, but we do know that, uh, over the last five years, running backs have missed 1.2 games on average, and most of them miss one zero or one game. So this is a potential, um, opportunity maybe for, uh, Gibbs to get right do more film study. I don't know, get back on the field. So I do expect him as of now, obviously he's young. So it's a little easier to say than somebody like Aaron Jones. We don't expect necessarily a recurrence, but the recurrence rate and re-injury rate is 24%. So make sure that you watch that. I don't know if somebody's still big on Gibbs, I'm probably moving him somewhere for something else for another piece. If anybody still wants him in your league, but this is just another tally mark that the other thing that I think functionally speaking, this is going to slow his progress down because he took a, yet another week at least where he's primarily rehabbing out with the team. That is not good for reps. That is not good for coaches perception about you right or wrong. It is not good for the organization's percep- perception of you. And it just bolsters their confidence in David Montgomery, which on the flip side means I'm going after David Montgomery in leagues where guys are giving him up. So I don't know if you have any, anything else additional to that. Uh, definitely very much. Um, because, Right now, considering one of the players that we're going to talk about, uh, Laporta, you know, La- Sam Laporta could be someone that could open up some targets for him. And uh, but yeah, you know, it, that they they definitely funneled a lot of targets to uh, DeAndre Swift last year. I believe it was like seventy targets, you know, and 
you definitely it, it <clears throat> it's tough when you when you when you miss that and austin eckler was talking about the fact that he needs game time reps to actually uh in, you know kind of make stop making those those uh rookie mistakes and kind of like really realize his talent because he has a different gear that that david montgomery just does not have and so um and I, and I think honestly you know the that is only going to come with with time and the time and experience game game experience so uh hopefully he gets back healthy um and especially considering the fact that in the back half of the season they have a lot of home games a lot of games under domes so there there could be some really big shootout possibilities in the, in, uh, in that detroit offense um Okay, so we're going to go through a couple players that got put on IR, and that um, we've had some other, you know, that you've, you, you know, we've had some updates earlier in this week, but uh, since then there have has been new news, and one of them is Anthony Richardson. Uh, really unfortunate, had a, had a tough fall, and um, really, you know, it's it. I hate. I mean, it's almost falling like. Um, what you talk about that look at the different injuries and it's in you know he people are saying he's injury prone well he had a knee injury in the first game second game he got a concussed and the third game he, he had a player fall on him in his shoulder so it's kind of like really are we, i mean it just so happens that they all got bunched up like that when when you're talking about uh richardson first let's talk about his prognosis and second it, is his style of play something that could be detriment, detrimental so that's the thing is you mentioned a lot of different injuries he sustained. And I, this is a bigger conversation for another day in the injury prone draft guide and playbook. I actually wrote an entire chapter on our rushing quarterbacks, our mobile quarterbacks injured more. Like we're going to take the take the opinion, the, the hashtag whole take out of it. We're going to make it. We made it an objective question. Our quarterbacks who rush more, that's design runs, that's scrambles. Are they injured more frequently that was the first question. And are they placed on IR more frequently than their counterparts who don't rush as much? And the answer was no. Statistically speaking, right? Objectively speaking, that you can argue where the cutoff is. The, you can go to the uh, go to the draft guide or go to fantasypoints.com and see this article. There is no statistical difference between guys who rush more and guys who rush less in terms of injury rates. They don't miss any more time. Mobile quarterbacks don't. They don't miss. Uh, they're not on IR more frequently. All of those things are untrue. They're all primarily a myth. I'm not saying it's good to plow into a defender, right? One on one. That's obviously not what I'm saying. But what we do know is that just the act of rushing and and being mobile as a quarterback does not lead to more injuries. Here's what I, where I'll give a bit of a caveat, right? Anthony Richardson got a concussion on a play that he probably should have just stopped. I get it. He he's competitive, right? He was fighting for an extra yard, trying to get to the end zone. I understand that, but that those are the plays that he can avoid. The other one, like this was sort of a sweep out to the, to the outside. And he had a, he had a defender behind him. He had a defender in front of him. He had a defender to the side of him. That play was going nowhere. At that point, I screamed at, screamed internally, slide, slide, slide. And then he didn't slide and he got landed on boom. Right. AC joint sprains are very common, by the way. They're just as common in the pocket as they are uh, on quarterback runs. So that's a long, long way. You're probably wondering, okay, what does that mean for, for Anthony Richardson? A, you still want to acquire him in Dynasty. B, this is a grade three AC sprain. What's likely going to happen is they're going to rehab him for the next month. At the next month, they'll probably have another follow-up with the doc. They'll take another MRI. They'll have another assessment, and they'll decide, okay, is this healing the way that we expect it to be healing? If it is not, they will have to go through for surgery. The reason they're not jumping to surgery is because it's kind of a controversial surgery. Does it work? Does it not? We're not entirely certain. A lot of times you can rehab these injuries. So if he has surgery in a month, obviously he's done for the season. Not going to happen. You know, it's just, it's just not going to happen for him this year. If he rehabs over the next month, things are going well. They're gonna, probably going to continue rehabbing another two weeks, another three weeks or so. Right. I do think that is possible. If he's going to come back, he'll come back right before the fantasy football playoffs. That is still in the cards for Anthony Richardson. Throw him on, on your IR. Do not drop it. Unless you have very short benches, do not drop Anthony Richardson. No, definitely. And uh, gosh, I, I, how things changed from Sunday to Monday. Devon Achan, um, that, you know, the, the knee injury. We still don't know if he needs surgery. The the Dolphins have been very, very kind of like cloudy about this one. So um, 
reading through the tea leaves, the play that the plays that you saw that where he could have gotten injured. Um, do you have kind of like a forecast? So this is a tough situation too. There's a chance that Devon A. Chain has an MCL, a chance, sorry, Devon A. Chain. Uh, there's a chance that he has an MCL sprain and additional meniscus damage just based on the angle and the specific view that we have. If it is MCL plus a meniscus, then this is probably going to extend out to the, like the six week mark or so. If this is just an MCL, four or five weeks is typically, hopefully, what we can expect for Devon A. Chan. But yeah, um, he's on IR now. Another guy, obviously, don't drop him. Throw him on your IR. When he comes back, it'll probably take one or two weeks for him to get his legs back under him. But do not drop him. He shouldn't lose any explosion. He's super young, super talented. Big picture takeaway. Again, I don't want to be the guy to say guys can't do this or can't do that. But the concern with the Devon A. Chan coming in was his size. And, I, uh, and I'm 100% understanding that there have been other... I'm the one that's always saying, guy's injured. The NFL has a percent injury rate. I understand that. Comes to Devon Chan, his size does concern me because in the first two months of his NFL career, he already has two major injuries that, that are primarily contact-based. And I get it. A 300-pound defender landing on any running back, this will happen to. Um, but the question is, is it, is it, I'm, and I'm asking the question, I'm simply posing the question. It does his size have to do with the two contact injuries that he sustained already, or are they a fluke? I don't know. So from a dynasty perspective, uh, I'm holding her now, but there could be a chance that this be has to be. I know it's tough because, I mean, you've got a guy that's that's getting 12, car 12 yards a carry. I mean, he's already, you know, he, he basically missed two games and he's still second in the league in, in rush in rushing in rushing yardage. So, um, gosh, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think for me, and, and this is something, you know, from talking to you, if a guy doesn't have surgery, I think that that to me is a great, is, is a great indicator that, you know, when he can rest and rehab and get, and get it right that way, you know, that, uh, to me, that, that pretends greater longevity that he's not going to, that, that he's not going to, you never want surgery. Cause I, I, I always think it's hilarious when people say they're coming back better than ever after surgery. It's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, rarely. I don't think, yeah, rarely. it's uh, very rarely, very rarely that that happens. So uh, <laughs> there's always, even if it's 1% uh, down, it's still 1% down. So, uh, well, mi amigo, we're going to get into the main section the four players that are really, really impacting fantasy this week. And our cover boy, first tight end that we've had uh, on, on the thumbnail, Sam Laporta, came up with an injury designation that really kind of freaked out people. And uh, what's, what's his likelihood to play this week, especially in a, in a great matchup against the Panthers? So all the stats and data I'm about to give is from a relatively small sample size. So be careful in interpreting it. But we do know that he was at the walkthrough today, Sam Laporta was. Uh, at least we believe, based on the reporting, that he was at the walkthrough. But he didn't practice yesterday because of a calf issue. This is the first time that he's been on the injury report with the calf issue. So here's what you need to know. 80% of tight ends are out on Sunday when they when they miss practice, uh, when they don't practice on oh. Thursday. But, and this is where the big caveat comes in, 80% are active if they get in a limited participation on Friday. So another bigger picture set, right? So let's, I'll pause there. Cause I usually, I think I give too much, too many numbers too quickly. Basically what this is saying is usually four out of five times. If a tight end doesn't practice on Thursday, they're out flipping it. The tight ends who do play, who have this calf issue, they typically at least practice in a limited fashion on Friday, right? So he did practice in a limited fashion on Friday. In theory, he could play on Sunday. This is where it gets kind of tricky, though, because the as we mentioned before, the Lions are extremely conservative. I wouldn't say as conservative as the Packers, but they're conservative with their injuries. I would say they're sharp with their injuries in reality, but they do tend to sort of slow track their guys so that they they have them fully right and closer to right, which is why uh, Amon Ross St. Brown missed last week and he's back this week. But I do think that um, this is a situation to monitor. At this point, you're going to have to add somebody if you didn't already, right? Like somebody off the waiver wire. Dalton Schultz is probably gone. Um, Luke Musgrave's on by. Like you're, you're, you're really probably struggling. Logan Thomas was a hot waiver wire ad, so you're probably struggling to find a tight end, Jorge. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, when, when it comes to them, I mean, gosh. Well, 
uh, one guy who's uh, I I would recommend very much is Gerald Everett, uh, who may be on the waiver wire right now because the the forty um, George Kittle just took apart the Dallas Cowboys defense for three touchdowns last week, so uh, they don't defend the tight end very well. So go grab Gerald Everett just in case. Or I like he, Gerald Everett because uh, um, what's his name? The the backup tight end there in Parham, Los Angeles. Donald Parham. Donald Parham was seen in practice with a super taped up bulky wrist. No way, no chance he's catching balls with that. They won't throw it to him with if he's going to be taped up and braced up like that uh, on Sunday. So Gerald Everett, I do think is a good option. Yeah, they're going to that can Well, let's talk about his teammate, Austin Eckler. This week on the Yahoo uh, on the Yahoo Fantasy Show, Austin Eckler's Edge with Matt Harmon, our amigo Matt Harmon. Austin Eckler said he's 99% chance that he's going to play. Now, uh, some people might look at Jonathan Taylor's, uh, you know, his lack of usage where he only got six uh, rushing attempts last week and be like, is Austin Eckler going to be that? Does it, I kind of, I kind of push back and say, I, I feel like they need him more, but I, I mean, I don't know if he gets all the way to the, his full usage, but you know, with this much time, it's now, I think four weeks since his injury, uh, how close is he to be number a hundred percent? Yeah. You would hope that at this point, he's pretty close to, to, I was going to say 90%. He's probably close to like 85, 90% of what he usually is. The last time Austin Eckler had this injury, it wasn't as severe. He came back and he scored 85% of his fantasy points in the first week back in the injury prone draft guide and playbook. What you find with these big samples of, uh, running backs since with high ankle sprints since 2016 is that they come back and they're fine, especially the first rounders. They're okay. They give you a floor, but I wouldn't expect a ceiling game from Austin Eckler. I know this is going to have fireworks. He's going to need touchdowns in order to, to have a big game, or he's going to need a ton of checkdowns, and I'm not sure that's going to necessarily happen because Keenan Allen's still now still there. Um, they had a bye week. They had a whole week to sort of get ready for this game. Um, again, I think Austin Eckler will be good. I'm not saying sit him in any scenario. I would say for, for cash, be careful. Like in cash games, in tournament plays, go for it. Um, I just wouldn't take any rushing overs necessarily for Austin Eckler. Yeah, I mean th this this game is going to shoot, and um, the 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 Chargers the Chargers they're going to need to pass the ball, and they're going to need Austin Eckler to uh, be a part of that passing game. But I think it's going to be Keenan Allen very much uh, is is going to be very much involved, and who knows if I mean and Josh Palmer. We talked about Gerald Everett, and uh, who knows if they get Quentin Johnson more involved. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I'll, to me, I've got a couple, t is, um, I think it, they had three teams with Austin Eckler and for me, 80% of Austin Eckler, I, I'll take that over, over who my, you know, uh, door number two is. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely take that one. So, uh, next one was an injury designation that came up right before the buy Mike Evans came up, you know, came up, it came up after his injury, uh, it came it, after the game, it came up that he had, he had a hamstring injury now. With two weeks to rehab it, could that buy have come at the right time? Yeah, this is the thing on Mike Evans. And this is a thing in general. It's not really a Mike Evans thing, but it kind of is. Wide receivers who are 28 plus years old, they have a re-injury to hamstring strain 64% of the time. That is already including uh, what happened to Cooper Cup. That does include that number. When you look at Mike Evans, he's had a history of this since 2019. This is his third or fourth go around with the same hamstring injury. It doesn't go away, right? It doesn't just magically disappear. Todd Bowles did say that he's going to be, quote, a full go. We'll see what that means. The first game back for these receivers is the riskiest one. We assume that he's healthy. We assume he's going to be out there and, do, and you know, have a full allotment of snaps. I'm not taking a Mike Evans. I'm not betting on Mike Evans, right? I'm not going to bet on, on his receiving yard prop uh, if it's out there. I'm not going to put him in any cash lineups. Most 12-team season-long, you know, redraft leagues, you're probably going to have to throw him out there. Uh, unless you have better options, unless you're just loaded. But this is a, a situation where I'm trying to move Mike Evans away. And as a contingent ad, uh, maybe consider this your your indirect buy low. I'm looking to add his teammate, Chris Godwin. Not because Mike Evans still can't perform. He could. Not because Mike Evans isn't good. He, he is. It's just because the risk associated with this profile is the exact guy that when he goes down, everybody's going to lose like it, i'm not going to say he's going to go down but if he were to go down he's the type of guy we've seen in the past where fantasy managers throw their hands up and they and they pray to the fantasy gods and they scream you know why porque when we could have seen this coming the whole time he's that type of profile i'm not saying that will happen but this is the type of profile where we are a little nervous for mike evans yeah i mean like you said injury history 
It's one of, one of your key things, injury history, and he's got one. And so that that's, yeah, Chris Godwin, I, I was really bullish on him before. I mean, he's he's been fully healthy. Breaker Mayfield has been surprisingly good. Uh, Godwin's definitely a guy. Keep an eye on Kate Otten. Uh, just in just in case, if you need a tight end, he is uh, definitely you know kind of moving up the pecking order when it comes to targets. So uh, definitely look at him. But again, you're right. Yeah, I, I, Mike Evans is definitely is, is definitely play as long as he's out there. So hope, fingers crossed. Well, I like Lara Veladora to make sure he's uh, he's in there. He stays in there. Amonra St. Brown missed last week right now there's been nothing saying 100 percent that he's coming back but it looks like he's trending we've got some limited practice sessions in um that that though any kind of core injuries at, you know they're calling it an abdominal uh, those are, i know those can be tricky you talked about it last week uh you know with having missed a week is it a good enough amount of time to maybe get that back so usually what you see with these injuries is they miss zero or one games or they need surgery. Most of the time in the sample that we have working with the, the sample that we have since 2018, most of the time these guys don't need surgery. So we're going to hope that this isn't severe for Amon or St. Brown. We're going to couple that with the fact that, like we mentioned earlier, Detroit is a lot more conservative with their management of soft tissue injuries, which I think is a good thing. Uh, and we're going to assume that he won't suffer a recurrence or re-injury. A lot of times, at least in my experience and observing the data specifically, I, I haven't, can't say that I've seen a ton of abdomen injuries specifically, these core muscle injuries. I haven't treated them personally myself a lot. But what I see from the data is that a lot of times teams will automatically go to the conservative route, which is always the right choice, which means no surgery. And usually there's really no middle ground. You either need surgery and it's going to get better or you don't. And I do think that next week or this week, we'll find out how severe or not severe it is for a monarch St. Brown. I am betting on the fact that it's not too severe just because I don't think that he would play. If it was, I think the lions would hold him, hold him back. If they did, the re-injury rate is, is relatively low for these, these core muscle injuries. It's something to be careful of and mindful of. But when I did on the Patreon, I did my, uh, my consensus rank adjustments. I take the consensus rankings from fantasy pros, uh, from the top 10 rankers for the season. And I put them into my own spreadsheet and I make adjustments. And one of the adjustments that I made is I bumped him on our St. Brown up seven spots. In addition, it coupled with the fact that even if Sam Laporta does go, he likely wasn't, you know, he wasn't a big part of the game plan for at least one day, which is a big deal. And that could mean more targets for Monroe St. Brown over the middle where he tends to thrive. So I am looking for Monroe St. Brown to have a pretty decent day. Uh, and again, tag, tag freezing cold takes if it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it, everything would be seem to be in front of them, and you know, this game being in Tampa, the the Bucks are the the Bucks are pretty good with the passing game, and the the Lions have been very good against the run, not not so great against the pass. Uh, I mean, less so, and so I I could see them, I, I could see a little bit of a mini shootout happening in Tampa this week. So and then that that's just good things for Monroe St. Brown. That's why it's just so crushing if that it looks like Gibbs is going to be missing this game. So, eso duele, eso duele. Um, okay, so we're going to get into a new section. That uh, new segment, you know, I like it. New segment, you know, who put that in there? Of, oh, el, 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 uh, el, mi rey, el, el, yeah, el rey de los descuentos, injury discounts. <laughs> so, there's you know, we teased it at the beginning. There's three wide receivers that right now, because of injuries and and other uh, injuries, that they may be a little bit on the uh, on the discount side. So, I won't throw in the first one out, Chris Olave, which I, I love the idea of buying low on him. Yeah, Chris. Okay, so I do want to talk about Chris Olave, um, but I do have to mention here, Jorge, this just came across Twitter. Ian Rappaport, unless this is a mistake, he just tweeted that uh, the Dolphins running back Jeff Wilson Jr. is doubtful for Sunday. So um, keep a keep track of that. Uh, that is something to monitor. I'm not, I, that was unexpected. That was sort of out of left field. We assumed that he was going to play. Uh, okay. Anyway, so Chris Olave. This, we'll keep this one quick because we've been going on kind of long. I've been I've been droning on uh, today, and I'm, and I'm sorry about that. Chris Olave. What you need to know about Chris Olave is he had this toe issue, right? And people were kind of freaking out. I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago, and he was working with the the AT or the PT on the side. Um, but he looked fine, right? From weeks one through four, 
Chris Olave had a 25% target share. He had a 42% air yard share, and he had a 0.26 targets per route run, right? In week five, he had 19% target share, kind of went down. He had a 41% air yard share, about the same, and he had a 0.17 targets per route run. So there was a little bit of an impact there for Chris Olave, but I don't think that it is too big of, a, of an issue um, I did think that they were focusing on uh, focusing on getting Michael Thomas ball a little bit more, probably because of this toe issue. Um, but what you need to know is that I do think that this is going to go. It's going to pass. I do think that Chris Olave is a stud. He's had bad touchdown luck. In fact, he was supposed to. I mean, I think he, I if, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was last week. He did have that touchdown pass that he was going uh, to, to count, but they they ended up uh, uh, calling it back. So, again, his numbers would have his box score would have looked a lot better last year, uh, last week, if he didn't have that 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 t- touchdown taken back so by chris Olave. no but definitely by chris Olave. i mean and and actually it uh uh partly because also Derek carr should be healthier right yes Derek carr should be healthier this should be another week removed from that injury and um i do think that he's going to be ready to roll okay the next one dk metcalf battling a ribs issue there was a game where you know he just missed out on a touchdown where he kind of he kind of got a kind of hit when he got hit on the ground I know ribs can can linger for a period of time, but I mean th- this Seahawks passing game has not taken off yet, and I I think it's going to at some point very soon, maybe even this week. Yes, yeah, I do think that 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 could happen. And th- the thing about DK Metcalf, right, is you might be worried about him. In 2022, he averaged 1.44 yards after contact per reception. Uh, in week in week four, that number was just one. Just he averaged just one yard after contact per reception. That is very, to me, a clear indicator that the ribs are an issue, right? If you're in pain, you don't want to take on contact, and when you do take on contact, you're a lot, uh, you're a lot more liable to just fold over because of the pain. Because ribs can last up to four weeks. He's been on this, in, he's been on the injury report with this ribs issue for, for you know, since week two, I believe it was. So, um, even though he's still on the report with the ribs injury, I do think that the the bye week gave him some time to get right. Uh, and I do think that with the 45 point over under against Cincinnati, I do think that this could be a get right spot for DK Metcalf. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully let's hit, let's get some points on the board. Let's get this offense going. I mean, I know we, I know, I mean, you being a Seahawks fan, but also so many people who had a Geno Smith this year, you know, had much higher expectations. I think it's coming. I, I've got a lot of DK Metcalf, so I'm going to, I'm definitely expecting more. Another guy that I, I've got a fair amount of Jalen Waddle, uh, He's, he came back from a concussion last week, also had an abdominal injury. It's, uh, it's been, a lot of things have contributed to a slow start, but man, I mean, to get any kind of piece of this offense at a discount, I think you grab it, especially with uh, HN being out for a period of time. No, I think you you nailed it. If you want a piece of a, a high octane offense, it's obviously going to put up points, then you need to absolutely go for it, right? So why is Jalen Waddle a buy low to me? Um, here's why, right? So this is, these are his numbers from every week that he was active. He's had the abdomen issue. He's had the concussion issue, right? He just has had a slow start because of the injuries. So, but every week that he was active other than week five, every other week that he was active, he had uh, a 0.02 targets per route run. He had a 17% team air yards and he had 16% first three targets in week five that went up. So he, he has uh that's when he had a 0.5 target per route run he had 36 percent uh team air yard share and he had a 32 percent first three targets his first three targets went up by 16 percent right he doubled it so this is all for fantasy points data uh this is a buy i really don't know what else to say i mean this is a buy low moment for Jalen Waller, right like his first three targets doubled his air yards you know more than doubled you're looking at, at a guy who has absolute crazy high octane upside uh i don't really have much else to add go get jalen waddle this is your opportunity potentially i mean it's just yeah i mean any because he's gonna have a blow-up game and then he's not gonna be he's just not gonna be available at that point it's just it, it yeah you're just not gonna have it and his blow-up game could come this week i mean it's just i, I mean gosh the the dolphin i mean the dolphins they they they've got so they they've got the weapons 
people maybe trying to trying to stop Tyreek Hill. Good luck with that. But also they've got Carolina in that back and banged up defense. The game is in Miami. I think I think every possibility. I think this may be the only opportunity to get Jalen Waddle uh, is is at this point in the season. So because I think after this week it could be there, there it could it could not not be happening when he goes for 150 yards and a touchdown. So get him now. Get him now. Buy low. Buy low. Uh, welcome, Padre. Let's uh, let's get into our little cultura class uh, a little bit. So we thought uh, there's a thing, uh, dichos, sayings, uh, th different things. So uh, you had a couple. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go first. Yeah. So my dicho, right, had to do with frijoles, which is really funny. Uh, anytime a, in my case, Mexican mother, either was out in public or was doing something. You never saw her move more quickly than when she forgot to take the beans off of the oven. She's like, los frijoles, mijo. and you would leave wherever immediately leave. Right. So that was one. That's first one. The frijoles is always funny. Um, if anytime you wanted to leave when you were at a, uh, you know, cause you know how Latin greetings take when you leave, you're, you're leaving for an hour. You say yep. from the moment they say they're going to leave, it's going to be at least an hour. But when mm -hmm. you really needed them, you would, Plant that seed of doubt. You'd say, Mom, dejas los frijoles? And then she would have to stop and wonder. Sometimes you could cut a few minutes off of that if you told her that you thought she left the frijoles. Um, but you had to be careful when you use that one because if you didn't, then eh, you got to be careful. The other <laughs> one was if you wanted McDonald's or if you wanted Pizza Hut or something, you know, some fast food chain, your mom would always say, Tenemos frijoles en la casa. Or this is my dad in, in most cases. Tenemos tortillas en la casa. Tenemos arroz en la casa. We have food at home. That's essentially what it comes down to. But that is the Latin Mexican version. What are yours? <laughs> my favorite, though, is, is always uh, um, Si sales a bailar, pierdes tu lugar. So if you get up to dance, you lose your place. So that, that was the thing when we were kids. There was always like one couch that everybody wanted to sit in when we were watching TV. And, uh, but, and it was, you, you couldn't call it. And then it, it was, but yeah, and you know, whenever, whenever mom or pop would, would, would kind of be breaking up an argument, would be, they'd be say, Hey, si sales a bailar, pierdes su lugar. It's over. So I do, you know, my mom still comes up with some of these that I haven't, that I haven't heard or haven't heard since I was a kid. And, uh, but yeah, that's one that always sticks, always sticks. Los frijoles en la, tenemos, tenemos en la casa all the time all the time man oh you know uh my mom made good hamburger and makes good hamburgers too so uh uh so that that that's uh that, that's good that 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 i'll take that one so oh uh, amigo uh, let, let's plug everything definitely let's uh let's make sure one more time making making sure you're going to the injury prone podcast on youtube and make sure you're going to the patreon patreon.com slash injury prone the, the, what, what we got coming up for get us ready for week six Nope, that's it. FB injury doc. Um, and hit the Patreon, patreon.com slash injury firm. And you can find me at Jorge Martin 17. I've got I I had rookie reports, uh running back running back reports. I just had a debate with uh Scott Pianowski about uh, about Monday night football. So check it out all on yahoo.com uh in the fantasy section. So uh, so proud to be there. So proud to be there, so proud to be there with my compadre. And thank you for joining us. Buena suerte in week six. And remember, buena suerte siempre, be good to each other, and let's go do this. Salud.